praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Hi everyone and welcome to the third of our four session Pray Series. The Pray Series looks at four aspects of prayer. Praise, repentance, asking and yielding. And this week we'll be looking at asking. This uh, series leads us nicely up to our national 10 days of prayer, which start at Ascension Day and end at Pentecost. And let's pray now, our uh, uh, prayer for the series. Father God, we thank you for the joy of knowing you. We thank you that you've made us family and we pray that you'll speak to each one of us through this series. Lord, we ask, teach us to pray. Amen. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol. Restore me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord. O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favour is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favour, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. How does it feel when God doesn't seem to answer prayer? It's not a question Christians often ask, but it is something we often experience. So here's Phil and Peter's experience of God not answering or not seeming to answer their prayers. How do we cope when we don't see an answer to our prayer? That's a very good question. and. I'm thinking in particular of uh, a person I'm praying for at the moment and I, I want to see that person healed. They're going through constant pain day after day and I want to see them living in the freedom from that pain. I want to see them healed and uh, and uh, enjoying life and uh, and yet that's not what I see at the moment. And as I pray for that person there's a sadness and a disappointment that I've not already seen an answer to that prayer. I can keep on praying and God does teach persistent prayer. But the reality is, is also that I've not seen an answer to that prayer yet. And uh, there's there's a sadness, there's a disappointment and there's an emotional kind of weight of, of that when you see somebody who's um, uh, you can't see the answer you're, you're looking for as you're praying for this person. I do believe God hears our prayers and he's, he's a God of love and our, I believe our prayers make a difference. But it, it is hard when you can't see the answer that you're praying for. And you don't understand why 
Some people you pray for are healed. Some people are not. Some prayers you pray, are, aren't, you know, you can see a clear answers to and others you can't. There's a tension there and there's an emotional weight, especially as you come to pray for the next person or the next situation. And uh, you don't, you know, you just carry that kind of emotional weight with you, but you have to kind of press on through that hurt and that disappointment. Um, but I, th I think of uh, another situation I've prayed for recently uh, with, with others and uh, is a, an asylum seeking family and appeal after appeal these uh, this asylum family kept, kept on getting turned down and we were thinking like well I was thinking like how do you pray for this family and so I prayed for a fair judge that they'd be met with a fair judge and a fair trial and treated with justice and when it came to their final appeal, the person who uh, was talking to them about the judge they were going to receive and didn't know about the prayers we've been praying said to them, oh, I'm glad you've got this judge. They're a fair judge. And it was at that hearing where the, um, the appeal was uh, granted and they were given uh, asylum in the country. And that, that for me was, I could see the justice in that. I could see the fairness uh, that which we've been asking for, that God had granted that. And I praise God for that. And I praise God that he's a God of love. Um, and I think the reality of praying is that you're living in a tension of not understanding why some, you see uh, clear answers sometimes, and other times you're left in the tension of uh, just uh, the, the, the pain and the hurt of um, not seeing what you're, you're praying for, but so, somehow you know that God's at work in it through through your prayers, that he somehow he's at work in that situation, but it's still hard. And I think that is the reality of prayer. Yeah. We're talking about prayer and how we have to wait for some things, how God doesn't give us what we want. Is God there? Is he listening? Well, Sometimes we're not sure. Does it get easier as you get more into prayer? Not really. Sometimes it gets more frustrating because you think that you should be closer to God. And you should hear what he's saying. And sometimes it takes a long time. One of the times I prayed, I worked full time for a church and um, We'd really come to a time when we needed to move house because Anne, as you know, was disabled and we couldn't get her up and down stairs. So it meant I had to leave the church and uh, I went for several interviews and eventually got one for blood transfusion. Um, didn't particularly want to work for blood transfusion, but it gave me what I needed at that time. and. Uh, them having offered me the job, I had to take it. Well, didn't have to take it, but I took it and enjoyed it for a long time. But I started asking God to give me a job where I could be useful to God all the time. I wanted to go back and work for the church full time. And God said, wait not yet and I started doing things in church uh, reader and various other things but God said stay up with transfusion and I didn't understand that and I prayed and I prayed once or twice more um, for about 30 years I prayed and God never actually took me into another job he kept me at blood transfusion to do what he wanted me to do. So there were times when I was praying and I didn't actually think God was listening at all. Sometimes I just went in tune with him. But like most of us, I thought it was him that wasn't in tune with me. So you can have to persevere with prayer. And it's hard work. It's not always directly rewarding. And sometimes God doesn't really do what you want him to do at all. 
I quite forget that he's God. But, um, you know, and sometimes prayers are answered in a most unexpected way. I've been a scout leader for years, as most of you know, and on one particular occasion I was leading the first aid team at uh, a local scout camp, 300 acres and perhaps 1,000 kids there. So, fairly big place. Just after tea on a Saturday evening, this 17-year-old, 18-year-old fell out of a tree into a muddy puddle, as they do. But this lad broke his arm quite clearly in two different places, so there was bends in his arm as they got three elbows. Took him off to a hospital, and it was, as I say, a Saturday evening. All the trolleys were lined up, ready for the drunken brawls on this uh, particularly rough area, waiting for the, the, the fights to come in. We met the dragon that was the matron and said, you're not coming in here with all that mud on you. So we had to take him shoes, trousers, various other things off to get rid of the mud. And he's laid there in agony. And God said, pray for him. And I thought, lovely. He's not gonna appreciate me saying, I want to pray for you when he's laid there in agony. And what do I pray for? As a Christian, we're told to pray for miracles. Was I expecting the bones to heal and he walk out? I don't know. So I prayed. And I don't know what I was praying for. But a peace came over him. And he fell asleep without any pain at all. Two miracles happened that night. I prayed for somebody because God had told me to. And God made him completely pain free. I hope you have as much adventures in your prayers as I have had and I hope that your disappointments are as great as some of mine have been. God bless. Let's have a closer look at asking in prayer. Our first question in, in this series is usually why. For many people the whole point of prayer is to ask God so why wouldn't seem an appropriate question we know that prayer is about having a relationship with God. So we can still ask why. Why should we ask in prayer? If you've watched the two previous videos in this series, you know that the answer is easy. It's because Jesus said so. He said, when you pray, say, Give us each day our daily bread. If Jesus tells us to do something, that's a very good reason for us to do it. But let's have a closer look at asking in prayer. What happens when we ask in prayer? Intercession, where we ask on behalf of others, and petition, where we ask for ourselves, are deep subjects and we won't have time to cover everything in this short video but let's dive in first of all God knows our needs even before we ask so why do we need to ask I think there are a couple of related reasons first of all our relationship with God. It helps our relationship with God. I know I seem to be obsessed with our, that relationship, but in my defence, in the Bible, God seems obsessed with it too and goes to extraordinary le lengths to ensure it can happen. 
We don't thank God enough when he gives us the things we ask for in prayer. Imagine what our relationship would be like if he just quietly put everything into place for us in the background. We probably wouldn't take time to have a relationship with him at all. The other reason I can think of is this, that we were made to work with God, to look after his creation in partnership with him. God values that partnership. In the Bible, stories like Abraham talking with God before the fate of Sodom show God consulting with a human about the best course of action to take. God hasn't changed. He still wants to work with us. And God always answers prayer. In Matthew 7, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. I believe that God always answers prayers. In fact, I believe it so strongly, I'm going to say it again. God always answers prayer. But sometimes it doesn't feel that way. In fact, if I'm honest, often it doesn't feel that way. I ask, but I don't seem to get. So what's happening? Well, sometimes what I ask for is not what's good for me or anybody else. So God isn't going to give it to me unless has a plan to redeem the situation. For example, the Israelites asked for a king. It wasn't good for them. And God warned them. And everything God warned them about happened. But he saw a way of redeeming the situation. And allowed them to have what they asked for. So sometimes I'm just not asking for stuff that's good. And sometimes it's not the right time. If an eight-year-old asks his father to buy them a car so they could drive themselves to school, the father would say no. Ten years afterwards, if he could afford it, the answer may well be yes. Our Father in Heaven always gives us at the optimal time the right time, the best time for us and for everybody else. And sometimes what he gives me seems to be the complete opposite of what I asked for. I asked for ice and he gives me fire. I believe Jonah had that experience. I think he prayed for Nineveh to be sorted out. But his vision of them being sorted involved fire from heaven, not grace. God heard his prayer and used him to sort Nineveh. But with grace, not fire. And Jonah had a temper tantrum. I have some sympathy with Jonah. I've been known to have temper tantrums with God as well when he's not answered the way that I wanted it to be. So sometimes I don't ask for what's good for me, sometimes the time's not right, sometimes God answers but it's just not the way I expected and sometimes nothing seems to happen. But God answers prayer so when nothing seems to happen, does that mean I've got the prayer bit wrong? Perhaps I'm using the wrong language. Perhaps I'm playing at the wrong time. Perhaps I'm not righteous enough. There's so many areas in my prayer life 
I could point to as not being good enough. But none of them are the reason that sometimes nothing seems to happen. See, it's not what I'm doing or not doing. That's the issue. But what I'm not perceiving. Just because I don't see God react doesn't mean he hasn't. Like a little boy playing. Playing with aeroplanes. Toy aeroplanes. And getting so excited about them. While his mum seems to just get on with cooking the tea. And then he's so excited and surprised when his mum takes him to the airport to look at the aeroplanes for real. You see, he didn't perceive her reaction. And so often in prayer, I think that's what happens. God reacts to me and I don't perceive. A regular question, how much of our prayer should be asking in this case? Well, this week, there are two points to consider then when answering the question of how much of our prayer should be dedicated to asking. In Matthew's account of Jesus teaching about prayer, the Lord's Prayer is preceded by Jesus telling his disciples to not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. In Luke's account, the Lord's Prayer is followed by the story of knocking on a friend's door for bread in the middle of the night. As an example of being persistent in prayer, putting the two together. We don't need to use a lot of words and therefore spend a lot of ta time asking God for something. But he encourages to keep on asking. In Matthew it says, For everyone that asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for Everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. God answers prayer. It's been lovely participating in this praise, praise series with you. There's one more session left and that uh, comes out next Thursday at 7pm. And you'll find it on our St Margaret's and St Thomas YouTube channel and also on our Brightside and WinkerbankParish.org website. Let's close with a prayer. Father God, we thank you that your son taught us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, those who seek find, and to those who knock the door will be opened. Father God, thank you that you love us and delight to give good gifts to your children. Amen.